he was still Babe Ruth, man of the people. When he earned 80,000, which was a record amount, someone said to him, Babe, you know, you're earning more money than President Hoover. And he said, well, I had a better year than him. I mean, that was so typical of Babe Ruth's humor. What's important to know about him in that era is that he was a tremendous symbol of hope uh, for Americans, in part because he continued to do things that uh, nobody had ever done on a baseball field before, and in part because he made a lot of money uh, during that time when a lot of people weren't making a lot of money. So he was sort of a, um, sort of a symbol of normalcy, uh, the uh, uh, idea that we would hope to return to economic boom times. And uh, you know, if Babe Ruth was still all right, maybe we would all still be all right during the Great Depression. Although now in the twilight of his career, Ruth enjoyed one final triumph in the 1932 World Series against the Chicago Cubs. In game three, after two strikes, Ruth allegedly pointed to where he was going to hit the next pitch. He smashed the ball out of the ground. It became known as the called shot. The Yankees went on to win, but the debate about that home run still rages. Did he point? Yes, he pointed, because he did it many, many times. He'd say, hey, Jack, what side of the uh, scoreboard did so-and-so hit it? Oh, he hit it to the right, babe. Okay, now I'm going to hit it to the left. And he'd go out and hit it to the left. You know, it's just... You know, it just he, he knew the ball. He knew what he could do with it. It's a Ruthian thing to do, to predict that you're going to hit a home run and to do it on the very next pitch. It doesn't matter, really, whether he did it or not. What matters is we either think he did it or we want to believe that he did it. That home run would be his final hit in a World Series. As the Depression worsened, so did Ruth's form. In February 1935, he was sold to the Boston Braves and his 15-year love affair with New York and the Yankees had come to an end. His uh, career does sort of track with American history, of course. He has, his, you know, some very, very great success prior to the stock market crash in 1929, and then as the Depression worsens and deepens in the early 30s, 1932, 1933, Babe is starting to see the beginning of the end uh, as a player. I mean, he had a fabulous year in 1932, and yet he was pretty much out of baseball in 1935. Fittingly, Ruth departed with three home runs in one of his final games for the Braves. Numbers 712, 713, and 714. Just a week later, in May 1935, he announced his retirement, longing of a return to his beloved Yankees as their manager. And for whatever reason, uh, Jacob Rupert, the owner of the Yankees, didn't see uh, the managerial um, stuff in Babe Ruth and, and didn't want to uh, try to move him into uh, that sort of a position. He didn't want a petulant child to be the manager of the Yankees. And uh, so I, I think the personal relationship between the two of them probably, probably is what, what stopped any chances he had. His real dream was to manage the Yankees and he probably would have done a decent job. You know, he would have matured, you know, matured. He wouldn't have been a 25-year-old anymore. He'd have been, you know, 45 or 50. Um, but the answer was, uh, babe, my boy, you can't manage yourself. You know, why would you think that we would hire you to manage our ball players? It made him bitter, you know, after, after doing such great things for the Yankees and making uh, Colonel Rupert so much money, uh, here he's being shunted aside. It made him rather bitter. He was devastated. My mother said he never got over it. Um, he used to sit by the radio and call the plays before they happened. He, she said uh, he, he was so despondent and uh, depressed. Baseball is his life's blood. And here baseball was saying, sorry, we don't want you, babe. Ruth struggled without baseball in his life. The game was all he'd known. But his star failed to fade. Despite no longer taking an active role in the game, he was idolized wherever he went. The thing that happens with, with athletes is, is that you have, you have two deaths. You know, I mean, you have the death of your career, and then you have your own death. What do you do if you've been Babe Ruth? Where do you go? Well, how, do you, how do you recreate that excitement um, that you had when, when Every day you went and 60,000 people cheered you and, and called your name. Just a decade after retiring, he became stricken with cancer and a shadow of the figure he once was. 
But even then, Babe Ruth was still giving all of himself to the American people, right until the very end. There's been so many lovely things said about me, and I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to thank everybody. Thank you, thank you. Give away, Dad. Like 20 minutes before he died, he signed an autograph for a male nurse. He said, you better get it now, because you're not going to get it if you don't get it now. The poignancy is there. I mean, uh, um, uh, getting sick and, and uh, approaching death far too early, um, and yet still being Babe Ruth, being this uh, incredible uh, media personality and, uh, and real personality in American uh, culture, he, even then, he still had it when he walked onto that field. It's just a, it gives you goosebumps to, to think about it. On August the 16th, 1948, Babe Ruth died, aged just 53. America mourned its greatest sporting hero. People were very, very distraught. The people loved him. I don't know of anyone who didn't love Babe Ruth. It was just, uh, if you liked baseball, he was the, the icon. And then when he died, there were thousands of people showed up to honor him. Very, I can't think of any person other than perhaps some beloved president or something who had that kind of following. Ruth's legacy can be seen across America today, more than a century after he picked up a baseball bat in Baltimore. His record of 714 career home runs stood for nearly 40 years. He led the league in home runs scored 11 times and in runs scored eight times. A pioneer, a record breaker, and an all-American hero. Babe Ruth lives on. And still today, when uh, young kids come into the Baseball Hall of Fame, one of their first questions is, where's the Babe Ruth stuff? Uh, he hasn't played a Major League Baseball game since 1935, and kids are walking in today wanting to know about him. Uh, so he, he's as big as it gets in baseball, and uh, for a long time was as big as it could get in America. Certainly the rest of the people from his generation have pretty well been forgotten. I don't hear anybody talking about Honus Wagner very much or Ty Cobb very much. Um, I think Babe Ruth will always be with us. It's probably oral tradition more than anything. Fathers tell their sons and then sons grow up and, and tell their sons. It is kind of an amazing thing. You can go in, in um, taverns in the United States and there'll be pictures of Babe Ruth as often as there'll be pictures of, of any of today's athletes, I think. He just struck a chord in people in, in that the, the way he lived and the way he looked. He, he just sent the benchmark for, for success in athletics, I think, in the United States. <laughs>